Romans 8 and 28 says, all things work together for the good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. If you are here right now, God has called you here and he is working everything together for your good. Welcome to Hope Today. I'm Corey Langford and I'm joined here with Angela Madden and we are excited about the show today. We're talking about the trusting place. We're talking yes. about trusting God. Yes. Angela, what's going on today? Yes, you know, we know we should trust God and the idea seems super simple. How could we not trust the one who holds it all? Yet still we grapple with placing our trust in him, especially when we are presented with unexpected trials. Today we will sit down with author Becky Harling to discuss her book and learn how we can walk into greater trust with the Lord. Trust is pivotal to our relationship with Jesus. It is absolutely pivotal. And a lot of times God will put us in positions that force us to, to either do it ourselves and handle it and see how we struggle there or go deeper into the trusting place. Now listen, by watching today's program, you will learn to trust God more and be able to recognize the power of his name. And later we're gonna have a wonderful message after our break later on to help get you ready for what God's gonna do in your life. You know, Corey, whenever we talk about big topics like trust, I love these conversations because you can never get to the end of the place where you need to trust God. You know, so we encourage you even today as we sit down with Becky and talk with her, open your heart and your spirit that you would be challenged to go deeper. If you've been walking with the Lord for 50 plus years, there's still more ways you can trust him. Listen, you remember that uh, that game people used to play called the trust fall? Yes. Where you have yes. to stand there and fall backwards. And what it is, this is a game that really says, do I really know the person who's saying that they're gonna catch me? Yes. And one thing about trusting God is it exposes us to the reality that do you really have an intimate relationship with God to where you trust him with your life, with your finances, with your family, with your marriage, with your dreams, with your aspirations. And then on top of that, it's not about you. It's about him. Yes. <laughs> Listen, my girls love that trust fall game. We get all kinds of fun experiences with that. Yes. But what's beautiful about trusting God is that he is always reliable, unlike man. And it seems super simple to trust him, but we often struggle to do that very thing. So how do we practically trust God? What does that look like, especially when life gets tough? Today's guest, author and breast cancer survivor, Becky Harling, knows a bit about trusting God through hard times and shares her revelations in her new book, Tethered Trust. Becky joins us now to share some powerful insight. Welcome to Hope Today, Becky. Hey, it's great to be with you guys. We are so glad to have you and we're so excited to hop into this. So Becky, just help us to understand a little bit about where this idea for Tethered Trust came from and a little bit about your girlfriend gathering that this is book two of the series. Yeah, so Tethered Trust actually came because my husband, Steve, wanted to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> and we live with the Air Force Academy right out our backyard. And so we had an Air Force uh, pilot over and he said, well, you can jump out of the plane, but you need to be tethered to me. And Steve didn't want to be tethered. <laughs> but I think as far as trusting God, we need to understand that we are tethered to him. And even when we want to let go, he does not let go of us. We are tethered to him. And I rooted this uh, Girlfriend Gathering book in Isaiah 9, 6. Yes, I love Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I love that this is your anchor scripture for this tethered trust. And tell us a little bit more about that, Becky, because you propose in your book the key to trusting God is knowing his name. Explain that for us. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we think of Isaiah 9, 6 as a Christmas verse, right? And I mean, I love Christmas like everybody else. However, these names give us insight into the character of Jesus Christ. And it's Jesus who helps us to see what God is like, right? That's the big question out there that everybody's asking. 
what is God like? Is he out there to get me, to punish me, to slap me if I screw up in any way? And yet when we look to Jesus, we see these four names that describe him. And they're the very names we need in order to put our faith and trust in him. Yes, they are truly in an anxiety ridden world. We need to know the Prince of Peace. Becky, would you take just a few moments and share with us how the counselor God can help us even today? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, you know, we all, a lot of us go for therapy, right? Because we want somebody that understands us. We want to work through our problems, but we also need wisdom in our lives. I can't tell you how often I'm talking to young parents who say, Becky, I just need wisdom. I don't know what school to send my kids to. I don't know how to handle this crisis in my family or not. If I was going to go for a counselor, I would want to know that the counselor was good at listening and listening to me pour out my heart. I would want to know that that counselor was wise and could give me wise counsel. And that's exactly who Jesus is. The psalmist tells us that he bends down to listen. That means I can pour out my heart to God and he is bending down to hear me and to listen to my problems. And his wisdom goes beyond anything I can understand. And so he can give me wisdom for what I need to do. Come on, he is the best counselor. And not only is he the best counselor, like Isaiah 9 says, he's mighty God. So the wisdom that he's giving, he can also help to see it through. Oh, Becky, this book is so awesome. And I love that you set it up as a part of a Bible study so that folks can go through it with their friends or their family members for four weeks. And you give us some very practical things to do throughout the study. Could you share one of your favorite maybe practices that you propose we should use with this book? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I set this book up so that a small group of friends could gather because I do believe that the journey to trust God happens better in community. And so there is the practice of community, you know, where I'm authentic and and real with my friends. But there's also the women um, that will do this study, or men for that matter, but it is called a girlfriend gathering, will be encouraged to praise God. And that may sound like uh, hypocritical if you're not sure you can trust God. But what I have found in my own life is as you praise God by faith, for who he says he is, the Holy Spirit will increase your trust to believe what you're praising him for. And so that's one of the key practices that's given in this book. There's places where women can gather and praise God together. I love that. Praising God truly is the key that unlocks the gates into more of him. And I love that you have that as a practical part of the Bible study collectively together in that moment and then also personally. Becky, would you take just a few moments and share with us a little bit of your journey with breast cancer and what trusting God looked like for you as you went through that battle? Yeah, I love that you asked that question because um, my journey to trust God was pretty deep and pretty dark at times. You know, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in my early 40s. I think I was 42. And Steve and I were still very much in the process of raising our four kids. And I just remember wondering, you know, how far had the cancer spread? Would I live to finish raising my kids? What would Steve do if I died? And how were our kids going to embrace this and handle this? And how was it going to impact their faith? And at that point, a mentor really challenged me to start praising God every day. She mm. said, why don't you try it for five days? And at the time, I thought, this is the most ridiculous challenge ever. I hardly feel like jumping up and down and saying, hallelujah, I have cancer. And she said, well, I'm not asking you to praise God for cancer. I'm asking you to praise God for who he is above the cancer. Mm. And as I started to do that, my faith and trust in Jesus Christ grew exponentially. I dove into the Gospels, and for four years straight, all I did was read through the Gospels, saying, Jesus, show me who you really are, because I don't want to worship an idol of you. I want to worship the real you. Mm. And as I made that deep dive into Jesus, God more than met me. And so through the surgeries, 
through the scary battles with cancer, he became everything to me. I often say cancer was very clarifying for me because it made me fall more deeply in love with Jesus. Wow, that even perspective on being able to say like cancer was clarifying, that it was truly like Corey open, Corey, even as you shared mm -hmm. this morning as we began the program, that yeah. all things to those who love God, yes. all things work for good. Yeah. And that perspective shift that she has of cancer being a clarifying moment and not something that's destructive mm -hmm. speaks exactly to that. Like yeah. that is so powerful. Yeah. It's, it's God uses moments like this because we get, we get shocked. We get surprised yes. because we think about our life and our time and our family and everything like that. But in this particular case, when, when, when Becky's gone through this, it brings us to understand that we need a higher resource yes. of power, of wisdom, of deliverance. And it reshifts us to a position where when we come out of it, now God can speak to us. We have discernment. You yes, know what I'm saying? We, we, we really can recognize like, hey, money can't change this. Yes. More work can't change this. Yes. More love can't change it. It doesn't yes. matter. All these things are really not necessary. No. But God is absolutely essential to yes. our growth and development. It's like you say, Becky, these moments really can actually secure that tether in him. You know, it makes sure we realize, okay, we're connected to the one who holds all the pieces together. Becky, I love that you shared how praise was your key in those moments, how your girlfriend instructed you, listen, praise God for who he is, you know, to get him back to his rightful position as the king over everything. Could you take just a moment, Becky, and look in your camera and minister to the one who's struggling to believe that really the God that you're talking about, this wonderful, this counselor, this mighty God, that he's not really for them. That's how they're feeling that he, yeah, I, I believe that that might be his name, but that's not how he shows up for me. Could you just take a moment to encourage that viewer who's struggling to trust that God is really going to pull that parachute when they need it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, friend, I want to I want you to know that if I can trust God, you can as well. And a lot of times we think when bad things happen to us, well, God has abandoned me. Nothing could be farther from the truth. There is evil in the world because way back in the beginning men sinned, and yet God says, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. In another place, he says, I will never leave you and never forsake you. I remember being in the hospital, being hooked up to all those machines and feeling afraid one night after my husband had left the hospital. And I remember the voice of the Lord reminding me of a verse that I learned as a little girl. I will never leave you nor forsake you, not during cancer, not during financial difficulty, not during problems with your kids, not during abuse. I will never leave you. Mm. And so we need to fortify our faith in Jesus because he promises that. And his promises can be counted on in your life today. So my challenge for you is if you're doubting that and you're struggling, why don't you ask God to show you the reality of who he is and then begin praising him by faith. Lord, I praise you that you will never leave me. I praise you that you are almighty. I praise you that you are the wonderful counselor and the bread of life. You know, you could use the alphabet if you wanted to. It's a great way to start your praise journey. But see if God doesn't show up. I guarantee he will. If he doesn't, I'll fly in and take you out for a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that, Becky. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you again for your amazing book, Tethered Trust. We appreciate all that you're doing for the body, and we appreciate your testimony. Scripture reminds us that by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, we're made overcomers. And Becky, today, I believe you made many viewers overcomers. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you. Wow, listen, make sure you pick up that book, Tethered Trust, to get a deeper relationship with God. Stay right there. We have a special message for you right after this break. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God, but they were just like you and me. 
They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Listen, we just had a phenomenal conversation with Becky Harling about her book, Tether Trust. And that title is so powerful. When you have something tethered, it is so connected. But for many of you, let's be honest and let's be real. You're watching this right now and you may not be tethered to God at all. You may not feel that you're tethered to eternity in heaven. You may say to yourself, I, I don't really know where I'm going to go, to be honest with you. I used to feel this way a lot. And this is something that people don't often admit. But even um, as a believer, because I grew up in church and things like that. But even as a believer, there was many times I didn't feel like God liked me. I didn't feel like he wanted me. I felt like the credibility of my walk with God was very low. I felt like, you know, it's like anybody that wants to get a house or gets a vehicle or anything like that, they go do a credit check. And based off of your credit history, based off of your faithfulness, based off of your consistency to pay your bills, they're saying, hey, based off of that, your identity, your character flaws, you don't have the right, you don't have the favor, you don't have the trust for us to to be able to give you this vehicle, to give you this house. And when you translate that kind of worldly view into the kingdom, you say, God, you know what? I'm one of them little people. I'm one of them people that mess up. I'm not consistent. I'm still smoking. I'm still, I'm still dipping and diving. I'm still lying. I'm still cheating. I'm still, I, I'm not ready to fully commit to you. So you know what? I, I, I want to know you in a deeper way, but I don't think you want to know me. Let me tell you something. God created all man and all humanity. He created every single one of them from the beginning all the way down to the end. God is so familiar with lifespans and lifetimes. You don't think in scripture there's people that are dealing and we're dealing with the same type of stuff that we're dealing with today. The Bible says there is no temptation that is new to man. So God understands what you are dealing with and he wants to tether you to himself. Imagine that a man walks into that same place while you're trying to get that credit line. And they say, you know what? Put it on my name. Put it. Let me sign. Because my name has more trust. It has more powerful. It has more faithfulness. We in our own selves don't have the ability to save ourselves. This is something that we have to destroy. And I think it's this mindset, and it's a worldly mindset, and it's the lies of the enemy to make you believe, I got to get myself together before Jesus. It's like working out before you go to the gym. Or it's like getting healed before you go to the hospital. It, the irony is that you think it's something that you have to do. And the enemy tries to make us believe that it's an ego thing, it's an I thing. No, that's a motivational speaking thing. But with Christ, we can do nothing outside of him. He says, I am the true vine and you are the branches. You can do nothing outside of me. So I, I was thinking about a story in the book of John. There is a story of a woman who comes to a well. Many of you might have heard this story, but if you haven't, in the book of John, uh, chapter 4, there's a woman that goes to a well, and at that well, Jesus is waiting there. He made it his prerogative to sit at that place at that time for this woman. Now, this woman is coming to get a drink of this water, but this water in this well is a representation of something she keeps reaching for to satisfy her, to quench her, that is not quenching her. Let me tell you something. I don't care how much you jump on social media. I don't care how many notifications you get. We really look at those things because they give us some kind of affirmation. They make us feel good. They make us feel wanted. And we keep going back to it like that well in that story. We want to go back and see, will this satisfy my soul? Maybe if I make more money. Ah, that's what it is. My marriage is falling apart. We're always arguing about money. Let me go make some more money. If we got more money, then we won't have argument problems. But then you still find that you don't have joy. You got more money, you got less 
less time. So now the bills are paid, but the love is fading. Or maybe you think, you know what? Uh, maybe if I just change my career, or maybe if I do this. And we do all of these things that we utilize as a well to say, God, I, I need more of this. But what we really need is him. One thing about having a relationship with God that supersedes every other relationship is there is a joy in Jesus. There is a strength and there is a peace that surpasses all understanding that cannot be found anywhere else. I've been having an experience with God because I'm very busy in the things that I do. I do film and photography and run a company and I have a family and everything like that. And I, there was times I was so frustrated, like I don't have enough time in my day. I, I don't have enough time. And I made this joke. I said, you know what? I wish there was a day between Friday and Saturday, maybe called Friday, <laughs> right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I said on Friday. I can catch up on all my work. On Friday, I can go on dates. On Friday, I can go to the movies. And I made a joke. But then the Lord said something to me that, that changed me. This week, he said, meet me in worship and I will strengthen you. I began to worship the Lord. And the Lord hit me in such a way that he hit the deep places inside of me. Not the outside places, the exterior places, you know, the places that we do our work. Hey, how you doing? How are you? We don't really say the truth of what we're dealing with. No, but the inward part, God began to heal me. I'm talking about childhood tears that began to roll off of my face. And as I began to cry, you could see, I could feel that the Lord was acquainted with all of my secret prayers. Mm. I'm talking about the prayers that you don't even tell your spouse. I'm talking about the prayers that you feel like nobody has the capacity to even understand. God's like, I am acquainted with all of your ways. David says that in, in, in Psalms, I believe it's 129, when he talks about um, no, nowhere, wherever I go, you'll find me. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I fly up with e wings like an eagle, you are there. There's no place we can hide from God, not even hiding in the sense of saying we did something shameful, but some of us we don't, we don't bother God because we don't think he likes us. We don't think he has the time and the capacity. But I want to tell you something, just like Jesus waited for that woman in Samaria at that well. She was significant enough to him to say, I'm going to reroute my journey because there is a woman who continues to reach for things that aren't satisfying her. And he said something. He says, uh, you know, go get your husband. She says, I don't have a husband. She said, no. The one you're with is not your husband. You've had five husbands and none of them have been your husband. So what he's saying is relationships hasn't satisfied that soul area as well. There's more that you need than just love. There's more than you need than just saying, oh, you know, I'm going to fix it with this. He's saying you need living water. You don't need more money. You don't need more love. You don't need more people. You don't need more followers. You don't need more attention. You don't need more awards or promotions. What you need is the water the living water that is only found in Jesus. And when you've got to the end of yourself, we hear that saying all the time, I'm at the end of myself. The end of yourself is when you are so sick of your strategy of how you're going to make yourself feel better or be better that you finally get to a point in your life and you say, Father, yes, Lord. I found that yes is the highest praise. We hear someone say, hallelujah, it's the highest praise. But yes is saying, God, I want you. I want you to come into my life and begin to tell me how to feel and experience the love of God, how to do your will, how to be the person that you've called me to be. So right now, as you're looking in this screen, I pray with you right now that spirit of the living God, I pray that you would reach into the core dark spaces of the heart that's watching this right now and allow them to open their heart, their soul, their mind to you, Jesus, that you would go in and feel brokenness and areas that need healed that you haven't even told anybody about. Areas deep inside of you that you would feel shameful if you even uttered publicly what you wrestle with in your mind. But God is saying, I'm not ashamed of you. I don't judge you. I created you. I know why you reach for these things, whether it's, it's gambling or, or pornography or, or, or cheating or, or lying, whatever you reach for, God says, I know why you do it. And I don't 
don't judge you, but I understand that you're reaching for a need that only I can feel. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray in this moment, if there is one person who says, God, I want you to come into my life, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that that one on the other side, if you would open your heart and receive Jesus as your personal Savior and accepting that he died for our sins, meaning he is the truth, the way, the light. There is no other way to heaven but by Jesus. He is that route. I know the world says, oh, you know, trust the universe and you can go this way. No, no, no. There is no other way. It must come through accepting that Jesus is your personal Savior. And if right now you say, God, I accept you as my personal Savior, come into my life. I know you died for my sins and I know you rose again on the third day that I might have life. God would come and be Lord over your life and his spirit would come and be with you. And that spirit, I'm telling you something right now, there is no drug, there is no person that can give you the love that Jesus can give you and the power that comes through the Holy Spirit once you've accepted him into your life. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, if you decided to make that moment to accept Jesus into your life, I want you to call the number on the screen, 888-665-4483. Our prayer team would pray for you and be with you because you need a community to help you walk this walk out with God because this is a new thing. And as God begins to transform your life, he's gonna transform your surroundings. Don't be surprised if people start falling out of your life. Just rejoice and know that God is repositioning you for the things that he wants you to do. Angela, yes. share with us what it's God's so speaking to you. It's so good because, you know, I think you bringing up the story of Jesus at Jacob's well and, and yeah. us going to external things. You know, it's so funny. We grab a hold of the things that are outside of us to satisfy something that's coming from within us. Yes. And it's really counterproductive. But just like Corey said, Jesus is the answer to it all. One of my favorite scriptures says, perfect peace is his or hers whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in you. And so if there's any part of your life that you feel a lack of peace, if there is any moment that you're feeling fear or worry, it's an invitation to turn your gaze back to Jesus, to find that which can only be satisfied in him, the Prince of Peace that will settle your soul and bring you back to right standing. You know, I pray that you are one of our viewers that just now gave your life to Jesus and you'll see the new things becoming to your life. But perhaps you've been watching and you've known Jesus all of your life. It's a continual invitation to trust him more, to lean into him more, and to experience more of the infinite one. Today is a new day for you too. God bless you and we'll see you next time. On tomorrow's Hope Today, Combat negative thinking by abiding in God's truth. Podcast host and author Vera Schmitz shows us how speaking truth to ourselves provides the kind of peace that transcends our circumstances. That's what's on tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.